In this presentation, we will take a look at a sample of a financial statement analysis report. We're going to go through the overview of that report. The information can be found at this URL. We are not associated with this URL. We're just going to take a look at it for example purposes. Here we are on the website. This is the URL. If you would like to go here, there's going to be other resources here. Some of them are paid resources. We're not associated with the site here. We're just going to use the sample report as an example. So we have our report information, a report on analysis of financial statements of Oshak Leyland. Then we'll, I'll let you take a look at the preface here. If you so choose, we're going to scroll through. We can also take a look at the acknowledgement. I'm going to scroll through the acknowledgement here. You can see this at the website as well. We're going to scroll through to that. And then we're going to take a look at the executive summary. So we'll actually read through the executive summary here. Executive summary. The company has set itself the task of consolidating and enhancing its position in Indian commercial vehicle market, both in terms of volumes as well as in customer satisfaction in the medium term. The company is executing various initiatives in terms of process and product improvements to achieve this goal. After six straight years of positive growth rate, domestic demand for I'll skip the acronym, shows a decline during fiscal year 08 and stood lower by 2% year over year. Oshak Leyland also suffered a similar decline in its, I'll skip the acronym, portfolio. So here's, we got the summary information up top. We've got the fourth quarter for 2007 as compared to the fourth quarter for 2008. And then we're showing the percentage change. So this is a horizontal analysis. And then we've got the fiscal year for 2007 as compared to 2008. And once again, showing the chain. Now, obviously, we, if we were to calculate this, this is a form of horizontal analysis that we have in the summary report up top. So if we take the latest quarter, the 25620 minus the prior year, the prior quarter. Now, note here that we have the prior year first. And in our convention, in our examples, we typically were putting the current year for, first. So you have to be aware of, of course, which year is being displayed and what convention is being used in order to put the first year on the left or the prior year on the left. So we're going to subtract the uh, current quarter, fourth quarter of 2008 and subtract minus the 22910 for 07 fourth quarter. That's the change. And then if you divide that by the prior quarter, the 22910, we're getting our 11.8% here. So that's going to be our percentage change in this horizontal type of analysis. So then we have some analysis, all segments and geographies combined, and then volumes for the full year remained flat. Here, apart, apart from the passenger, sales of LCV and exports also helped prop up volumes. In value terms, growth stood at 8% year over year for the full year, thanks mainly to improved product mix and a series of price hikes that the company undertook during the fiscal year. So note they're giving some explanation here. Due to, we're looking at the percentage and they're saying, here's the percentage and here's what the reason of it is. And that's really going to be the part that you want to kind of take from a report such as this. It's not enough to just say, hey, here's the percentage. The numerator went up, the denominator went down. We want to be able to interpret it in actions what actually happened. And that's the skill that needs to basically be developed as we dig into the numbers and then see what's actually happening. Income for vehicles uh, was ours 68819. Uh, 4.1% over the previous year level at R66092. In addition, the company made investments in a vehicle manufacturing assembly plant at uh, that location, design engineering services business, uh, defines testing and engineering services incorporated USA and Germany, uh, which is engaged in development of fuel emission treatment control systems. So that was our summary. Now we're going to go into the table of contents. Within the table of contents, we've got the preface, we've got the acknowledgement, we've got the executive summary, and then in chapter one, we got the company profile, the about section, product range, and then we got the uh, concept of financial statement analysis. What are we trying to do here? We've got the traditional performance evaluation techniques, and that includes horizontal analysis, vertical analysis, trend analysis. That's where we're basically concentrating most, most of our time here or that's what we've been taking a look at and then we have chapter four analysis of profit profitability we've got our ratio analysis and this is a profitability analysis of profitability here so we're categorizing these gross profit ratios net profit ratio asset turn turnover return on asset return on equity then uh, the analysis of solvency and we where we have of course the debt and equity 
We have the interest coverage uh, ratio and then the analysis of liquidity. And that's where we have the current ratio, the quick ratio, the debt turnover ratio, the average uh, collection period, and the inventory turnover. Chapter 7, cash flow statement analysis. Chapter 8, recommendations and suggestions. So first we have a little bit about the company. So we've got Ashak Leyland is a commercial vehicle manufacturing company based in India. It is the second largest commercial vehicle company in India in the medium and heavy commercial vehicle segment, which market share of 28% 2007 2008. Ashak Leyland is a market leader in the bus segment. The company was established in 1948 as Ashak Motors with an aim to assemble Austin cars. Manufacturing of commercial vehicles was started in 1955 with equity contribution from a British company, Leyland Motors. Today, the company is the flagship of the, I can't pronounce that, a British-based and Indian-originated trans, uh, transitional conglomerate. Ashak Leyland is a technology leader in the commercial vehicle sectors of India. Its annual turnovers exceed USD uh, 2 billion in 2007 and 8, selling close to around 83,000 medium and heavy vehicles in 2007 2008. Ashak Leyland is India's largest exporter of medium and heavy duty trucks out of India. It is also one of the largest uh, private sector employers in India, with about 12,000 employees reporting in six factories and offices spread over the, the length and breadth of India. Over the years, Ashak Leyland vehicles have built a reputation for reliability, ruggedness, uh, with use mainly due to the product design legacy carried from uh, British Leyland. In the populous Indian metros, four out of the five states transport undertaking buses come from Ashak Leyland. Some of them, like the double-decker and Vistable buses are unique models from Ashak Leyland, tailor-made for high-density de uh, routes. In 1987, the overseas holding by Leyland uh, Rover, Leyland International Holdings, was taken over by a joint venture between, I can't pronounce that, the non-resident Indian uh, transitional group and another area, part of the Fiat group and Europe's leading truck manufacturers. This resulted in Ashak Leyland uh, launching the cargo uh, range of trucks. These vehicles used uh, Ivaco engines and for the first time AL vehicles had uh, factory fitted cabs. The cargo trucks are now longer in production and the use of AVAC engine was discontinued but the cargo cap continues to be used in the range truck. Ashak Leyland also has a collaboration with Hanu Motors Japan from whom the technology for the H-Series engines was bought. Many ingenious uh, versions of H-Series engines was developed with four to six cylinder and also conforming to BS2 and BS3 emission norms in India. These engines provide, uh, provide to be extremely, proved to be extremely popular with the customers primarily for their ex ex uh, excellent fuel efficiency. Most current models of Ashak Leyland come with H-Series engines. In the journey towards global standards of uh, quality, Ashak Leyland reaches a major milestone of 1993 when it became the first in Indians on the history to win the uh, certification. The more comprehensive uh, certification came in 1994. So, and I'll keep going from there so just note we have the summary of course of the company we want to have an idea of the company and as we do get the idea of the company if we were reporting this to outsiders or if we're thinking about it ourselves that'll give us an idea of who we can compare this company to what are the industry standards that we can compare the company to we've got the branch office office we've got the management team here we won't go through all the management teams we've got the achievements so we're listing the the achievements we're scrolling through the products here's going to be a list of the products that we have uh, the goods segments we have the list and then we're going to go to the concepts in chapter two we'll read over some of the concepts here because this should relate to our topic we're going to have the financial statement analysis objectives assessment of the firm's past present and future financial conditions that's going to be what the analysis is done to find the firm's financial strengths and weaknesses that's what we're looking for with this type of analysis primary tools the financial statements and the comparison of financial ratios to past industry sector and all firms. So in essence, we're going to take a look at those ratios. We could probably be taking a look at, we will be taking a look at the 
horizontal analysis, the vertical analysis. We've already taken a look at a horizontal analysis. And then we'll take a look at some of those ratios and see what that can tell us about the company's past and present. And hopefully future, we can get some insights to that. Financial statements, we got the balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statement, statement of retained, retained earnings, source of data, annual reports via mail, SEC, or a company website, published collections of data, investment sites on the web. Techniques of financial statement analysis, we have the horizontal analysis, vertical analysis, trend analysis, and ratio analysis. So those are our standard types of analysis that we have in the report here. Horizontal analysis, this technique is also called as uh, comparative analysis. So we can have comparative analysis. We're comparing uh, year over year or period over period. Horizontal analysis. It is calculated amount of change and percent changes from the previous years to current years. Trend analysis. It is carried out by first assigning a value of 100% to the financial statement item in a past financial year. Uh, used as a base year and then expressing financial statement items in the following year as a percentage of uh, the base year value. So that's going to be our trend analysis. We have multiple years. We're going to take them all back to the base year. And then we have our vertical analysis. Vertical analysis, cross-sectional, uh, common size statements. So these are similar terms, of course. Uh, came from the problems in comparing the financial statements of firms that differ in size. And so they're addressing the primary use of this type of financial statements. If we want to compare our financial statements to others, which have different dollar amounts, then we can use the type of vertical analysis, cross-sectional or common size type of analysis. In the balance sheet, for example, the assets as well as the liabilities and equity are each expressed as a 100%. Each item uh, to these categories is expressed as a percentage of the respective totals. So we're going to be taking a hunt, you know, a relation of every category to total assets, total liabilities, and equity. In a common size income statement, turnover is expressed as 100% of every item in the inventory statement is expressed as a percentage of turnover sales. So we're going to be comparing on the income statement everything to sales in our vertical analysis. From the vertical analysis, an analysis can compare the percentage markup of asset items and how they have been financed. The strategies may include increase, decrease uh, the holding of certain assets. The analysis may also uh, well observe the trend of the increase in the assets and liabilities over several years. And then we have the ratio analysis, the objective of the ratio analysis, standardize financial information for com uh, comparison, evaluate current operation, compare performance from past performance, compare performance against other firms or industry standards, study the efficiency of operations, study the risk of operations. And then we have the rationale behind ratio analysis. The, why do we do the ratio analysis? A firm has resources. It converts resources into profits through production of goods and services, sales of goods and services. Ratios measure relationships between resources and financial flows. So they're going to be comparing these things, which will give us information. It shows ways in which firms situate uh, deviates from its own past, other firms, the industry, all firms. So we can basically use ratio to make these comparisons from its past, its own past, to other firms, to the industry as a whole, or to all firms. Uh, ratios can, can be classified into the following categories. We have the categories of ratios. They have three here, profitability ratio, liquidity ratio, solvency ratio. Note we're not thinking about market type ratios. We're not taking into consideration mar market characteristics because this is the internal report and we're not considering things like a market price which aren't included in the data of the company. Profitability ratio. Profitability ratios measure the overall performance of the firm by determining the effectiveness of the firm in generating profit and are calculated by establishing relationship between profit figures uh, on the one hand and sales and assets on the other. Return on total assets. This is measure of profitability from a given level of investment. It is an excellent indicator of overall performance of a company. It is also called return on capital employed or return on investment. It measures how efficiently the company is employed. And then we have the formula here. We have the return on equity. It measures the profitability of equity funds invested in the firm. It is regarded as a very important measure because it reflects the productivity 
of the ownership capital employed in the firm. We have the formula here, solvency ratio, the capacity of a company to discharge its obligations towards long-term uh, lender indicates the financial strength and uh, ensures its long-term survival. It is important for an ana analyst to study the solvency of a company. We have the debt coverage ratio. The ratio measures the capacity of a company to pay the uh, installment of a principal due and the interest liability it has incurred on its long-term borrowing out of cash profits. It also known as the times uh, debt covered uh, service covered. So we have the debt coverage ratio. Here's the formula. The interest covered ratio, the ratio measures the capacity of a company to pay the interest liability uh, it has incurred on its long-term borrowing out of its cash profits, also called the times interest covered. Here's our ratio. We have the liquidity ratio. Liquidity is the ability of a company to meet its short-term obligations when, uh, when fall due. A company should have enough cash percent other current assets, which can be covered uh, in, into CAT, convert to CAS, so that it can pay its suppliers and lenders on time. Current ratio. Current ratio indicates the firm's ability to pay its current liabilities, i.e. day-to-day financial obligations. It shows the strengths of the credit, strength of working capital, and capacity uh, to carry on effective operations.